Hi, my name is Jada Harlan. I'm the Senior Talent Marketing Specialist at Market Pro, and we're here with our president, Bob Van Rossum, and discussing some details around resume building for all marketing talent. After being in the recruiting industry for over 20 years, what is your professional opinion on the best format for marketing resumes? A couple of things that we talk to candidates about resumes I think is really important is you need to understand who your audience is. And the audience isn't just simply the hiring manager. It is the hiring manager, but it's also HR. And once your resume gets into HR, now it's going into a software system. And that software system, will you'll want that software system to be able to keyword search your resume. And the best way to make sure that's possible is to send a Microsoft Word version of your resume. Okay. So do you recommend that a candidate have a Word version as well as a PDF version, or just stick with the... You know, it's kind of personal preference. I mean, my general recommendation would be Microsoft Word is the easiest format to move forward with, and then that way you can keep it consistent. A lot of times candidates may or may not want to control whether it can be edited. In general, you know, people in HR, hiring managers, it's not their goal to edit your resume, right? They're just looking to see if you're a fit. But you can lock it down so people can't edit it in Word, and you can turn it into a PDF. The risk with turning it into a PDF is that once it's set into their HR system, right, their applicant tracking system, it may not be searchable. And so as future opportunities come up with that organization, if they can't search your resume for the type of experience you have, you may not be a candidate. What are common mistakes that you and or our executive recruiters notice when it comes to a resume? I think the most common mistake is just making the resume functional instead of chronological. Right. So a resume in and of itself, by definition, is an explanation of your work history, right? In order to get a good picture of your work history, we need to understand what those transitions were and where you went from one company to the next, where you got promoted from one job to the next inside each company. In order to do that, we need to see that in a chronological format, right? Right. So whether you put your education, if that's something that you specifically want to highlight at the top, right? or if you put your education at the bottom because ultimately chronologically it likely happened before right. you started your work career right. isn't really important but it is important that for your career transitions themselves and your accomplishments and your success and everything that you want to talk about it is in a chronological format. Absolutely. So do you recommend the same for LinkedIn? I know we discussed that before as well with LinkedIn profiles or? So you know we've come across this recently where we've seen LinkedIn profiles and resumes not matching each other, right? And at the end of the day, it's a big red flag because the question becomes, is the candidate trying to hide something, right? right? And so it's ultimately the first thing we think of. Also, if you send a functional resume is, what is it you're trying to hide? Why isn't your resume chronological? And so ultimately, at the end of the day, your resume is a legal document. It is an, it's supposed to be an accurate reflection of your work history and what you've done. And if you were to find to have lied on that resume, it is grounds for termination from an organization. Now, the LinkedIn profile isn't that, right? It's just right. your LinkedIn profile, it's an online profile. But in general, what we're seeing is more and more organizations, understandably so, will compare the two to make sure that they sync up and match. Absolutely. And it has been shared um, that recruiters a lot of times are going through quite a bit of applicants, especially if you're working on the corporate side or even on the agency side. So what do you recommend to talent or candidates that are applying for positions when it comes to their resumes as far as um, maybe some keywords, like if they were a demand generation expert or? Well, I think it's important as a candidate to understand how we in our industry executive search or how people in HR read a resume. Right. right. Yeah. And you're you're exactly right. I and mean, we're going through many resumes very quickly. And the first quick read through may only be thirty seconds. And if your resume isn't formatted properly, that in and of itself can be an issue. Absolutely. So the first thing we're gonna look for is where are you today? What's mm -hmm. the job that you're in right now? And is that a logical transition into the role that we're looking for? Right. Absolutely. And if that if the answer to that question is no, we're moving on, right? I mean, that's right. that's about all we have time for in our world. We may, if it's we're not sure, go back a few jobs. But if it's pretty obvious it's not a fit, we've, we've got to move on. Once we've looked at your resume, we've determined, hey, the place where you are 
a logical transition is the place that we're looking to take you, then we're going to go back from that very current job all the way back to college, right? Right. And we're going to look at where did you start? How did you build the foundation of your career? Um, did you stay at places long enough to have an impact before you moved on to the next opportunity? And you know, we don't want to see people who are job hoppers. We generally believe everybody gets one mistake overall, but in general, we want to see that you have a good track record of staying, having an impact, and driving value. And Absolutely. then from there, we're, once all those things line up, we're going to reach out and want to interview you for the opportunity. So when it comes to submitting a resume, where do you uh, suggest that a candidate do so? Third party, or is it directly to like a recruiter firm, like what ourselves that have a website? Well, I mean, I think it depends. It there isn't necessarily one easy answer to that question, right? right? If you have someone from a executive search firm that reaches out to you, and you know you know that they are a retained search firm, then they've got exclusivity for the search. They're the only people working on it. They've developed a relationship with the hiring manager. They've developed a relationship with HR, and that's who you want representing you for that role, right? Yes. If you have a search firm that reaches out to you that is a contingency search firm, then you know, they may or may not be the only one working the role, and they may or may not have a real relationship with the client. So that is a question you can ask. But ultimately, you know, it's okay to send your resume directly to the hiring manager if that you have a relationship there. It's okay to send your resume directly to HR if you're interested in a position. And it's okay to give it to a third party if they're representing that role. The question you've kind of got to ask, your, ask yourself is, what's the most likely path to me being successful, right? right? And hiring managers have lots and lots of other things they're focused on. Hiring is one of them, but it's not their job, right? Their job is, yes. I'm the chief marketing officer at company XYZ and now I've got to hire people as well but I'm focused on my job as chief marketing officer right. so if you can get someone who is a executive search partner who has a relation with that person to represent you then you're in a much better position For sure. if you have an opportunity to send your information into HR that may work and it may not work it kind of just depends on how things go when is it appropriate to use pronouns I we and or if you use uh, the term like a team when you're talking about executive roles right. and describing yourself in a resume. So it, it's interesting because it sounds simple, right? right? But pronouns are often is where candidates make mistakes in their resumes, right? Yes. And if you are someone who says I a lot in the resume and I did X and I accomplished Y and I drove this value then the risk in that is it comes across as you're all about yourself, right. right? And what organizations want is someone who's gonna be a part of the team and someone who's team oriented and company oriented, not someone who is self-centered, right? Absolutely. And so that individual who writes I multiple times on their resume may or may not be self-centered. It may just be that they want to show that they're the ones that accomplished that, right? but there's a better way to write that than using the word I 20 times in your resume. <laughs> Absolutely, and especially when you're leading a team, um, they wanna know, of course, that you are responsible for a lot of the ROI or the performances of the marketing department, but they definitely wanna know that you are a team player. So mm -hmm. the balance is important, I'm sure, in the resume. Yeah, and it should. there should be different parts in the resume as you're talking through your accomplishments and you're going through your bullet points where you talk about what you did. And you can do that without using the word I. And there should be different points in the time where you say, part of a team or as a team, we did this. And those are the things we accomplished or, you know, and that's important as well. So Bob, how creative should talent be when it comes to resumes? So it's a great question. We just talked about this in another video that we did recently where we had a candidate run into a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. And we have this within the world of marketing where the people we talk to, and one of the reasons why we enjoy doing this so much, is the people we talk to are creative by nature, right? Yes. And so what we also see then sometimes is that candidates want to be very creative with their resume. And that has advantages, but it clearly has limits, right? So, very much so. we want the, you to understand that 
it is a document that's going to explain your success and your how you've done this for your career. It's also going to explain in chronological order why you're the right fit for this next step. And it's going to be viewed by more than marketing people, right? So we had a candidate for a EVP senior level marketing role send me his resume and it was a PDF document, which in and of itself is not a problem, but it was not at all following traditional resume format. It was, you know, his attempt to show off his creativity. It had the logos of every place he's ever worked in one kind of corner. It had font that, you know, was at least three point, if anything, it was <laughs> tiny. And he was trying to figure out how to make this a representation of how creative he was because he viewed himself as a creative person. And the reality is there is a time for that in the interview process. And there is a time for that in the job search process. That time is not your resume. Now, if you are a creative, meaning you are an art director, or you are a graphic designer, or you fall into one of those categories that is an actual creative person, that is a little bit different, right? And you have a portfolio and you want that portfolio included as part of your resume. And chances are nowadays that's an online portfolio and you can put a link in your resume. But if we're talking about marketing talent for marketing roles, and I want to put together a resume you want to be pretty traditional in the format that you follow because ultimately it's going to be read by a marketer, it's going to be read by a person in HR, and it could be read by a business person that's not in either of those areas. Absolutely. So are there any closing thoughts that you have as far as resume building to share with our talent? Well, I think as far as you know, building your resume, realize that you know, everyone just wants to have an understanding of where you are historically from a career perspective. Right. right? And we get a lot of questions on how long should my resume be? Is this too short? You know, the reality is if you're just out of school, it's probably going to be a page. You get five, six, seven years experience, it's going to probably lead over, bleed over into two pages. You get to be director VP level, it's probably going to be three pages. Haven't met too many people yet who need a four-page resume, <laughs> but ultimately you know, it will get longer as you have more experience and more things to talk about. So don't get too concerned about length is really the point. And then in general, you know, you want to have accomplishments from every place you've ever worked to put on your resume. And if you're only spending a year, two years at a place, mm -hmm. that's hard to do, right? right? And so one of the things we see with the job market being so strong right now is that people are moving from opportunity to opportunity looking for something better on a regular basis. And while the reality is the entire reason we're calling you is because we want you to move to something different, we also want you to build a career that over time benefits you. And in order to do that, you need to build a track record of success. And that means you should be staying within each company at least for three years. So this is a good overview of do's and don'ts for resume writing kind of 101. We're going to go ahead and add some additional videos out there for very specific skill sets where the requirements might be unique, but we appreciate the time you took today to look at our video.